Welcome to the Opportunity Podcast, where entrepreneurs come to learn from real buyers, sellers, and industry experts on the lesser known growth opportunities to build their online business empires. We'll uncover tactics veteran online business entrepreneurs have used to build, buy, flip, and sell their way towards personal wealth. Sit back, grab a coffee, and get ready to uncover hidden growth secrets. The Opportunity Podcast starts now. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Opportunity Podcast. This is our first ever episode. I am one of your co-hosts, Sarah Nuttycomb. Hey, everyone. And my name is Brandon Schmidt. And we're really excited to be bringing you Empire Flipper's newest podcast. So, Brandon, start me off. Tell me where you're calling from today. Yeah. So I am calling from the lovely central Mexico. So I am in Puerto Vallarta right now and enjoying nice humid rain season that we're having here right now. And how about yourself, Sarah? Where's it that you're calling from? I'm calling from Tenerife, Spain. We actually have a Kalima that's just come through. So big sandstorm. So it's actually super hot and super misty and sandy in there. It's kind of cool. I get to say I've lived through a sandstorm. (laughs) Yeah. Looks like we're really suffering through weather right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. It's. I guess it's that season, but, you know, I guess with, uh, you know, everything that's going on right now in the world, it's not like we can be doing much traveling outside of this anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty lucky to be, I think, where we are for sure. Well, just so you guys know, Brennan and I are on the marketing team at Empire Flippers and, you know, we will be kicking off this brand new podcast. This episode, we just want to talk about what in the world this podcast is and a little bit about who we are, maybe get into some more of that travel stuff and what that means for us at Empire Flippers. But let's not go into that yet. So to just kick things off, what is this show? So the Opportunity Podcast, this whole thing is about uncovering different growth opportunities throughout online business. So this is more insider tips and from sort of unconventional storytellers. So we've done a lot of storytelling with sellers and other experts in our other podcasts. But for this one, we really wanted to focus on a buyer perspective, even an Empire Flippers team perspective, and just really go after some of the hidden insights that, you know, aren't always spoken about. So I know when we think about growing a business, we think, okay, SEO, we think CRO, we think, um, how can we really optimize for a better ROI? But what we've really found is there's always growth opportunities that are sort of laying on under the surface that we could be digging into. So we figured there's a podcast around that and we're just going to dig into that for an entire season. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly, Sarah. It's uh, something that we've been discussing for some time here at Empire Flippers that we'd really like to give our listeners more insight onto what real buyers and sellers are saying that have been the best opportunities for them to scale their assets. So, you know, it's our idea with this podcast is to give you more insight, more tips, more insider knowledge on what it takes to scale any type of monetization that you can purchase from our marketplace and what types of opportunities real life buyers and sellers have been telling us are, you know, some of the best possibilities that they've been able to get out of these monetizations. So yeah, really excited to talk to everyone and to introduce this podcast as well and really discover some hidden gems and some golden nuggets for our listeners. Yeah. Speaking of golden nuggets, I think one thing we'd really like to focus on is just low hanging fruit. You know, what are the easiest first steps that you can take when you acquire a business or you're kicking off and starting your entrepreneurial journey to really get your business going? So that's what we're going to prioritize. And so far, we've already recorded a couple episodes and definitely our interviewees bring a lot of that to life. So yeah, so we wanted to talk to you guys about why we wanted to create this podcast. So really one of the coolest things Brandon and I have been able to do in the past year is do seller interviews. You probably heard us if you tune into the RMRB, Real Money, Real Business podcast, you would have caught us over there interviewing sellers and obviously getting nice overviews of the businesses that are being listed on our marketplace. What we really discovered through that process is, you know, when a seller is talking about their business, they always have uh, really good insight and really good ways of 
optimizing your business and really going after growth opportunities. But, you know, we don't always get the chance to really dig in on that. So it's why we brought that format to this podcast. We're really going to dig in on what growth opportunities are being missed, maybe what's hidden, maybe what's low hanging fruit. And so that's why we wanted to do this. Yeah. And it's great that you mentioned that we've been able to discuss and talk with many sellers on our marketplace through the Real Money, Real Business podcast and and hearing, you know, what they've done to optimize their business to make it, you know, eligible to be placed on our marketplace to begin with. But another thing I've also noticed over the last year or so that we've been talking with buyers was through our buyer ROI study that I've been performing over the last few months. And ultimately what it is, is I've gone and called and discussed with several different buyers that have acquired businesses from our marketplace and figured out what their ROI is, you know, how the business has been doing. And a great takeaway from those calls that I made were, you know, what were some of the growth opportunities that they improved on their business model that ultimately led to them gaining a positive ROI. So I'm really excited to bring some of that information, shed some light on those stories for our listeners in this series um, to find out what buyers have been doing on the back end of their business models to ultimately gain a positive ROI. And, you know, ultimately reach their business goals which they had originally set out to conquer. That's awesome. I know the ROI studies were no small feat and they've been amazing to finally have. So I'm just going to applaud Brandon real fast in front of everyone and (laughs) give him some credit because I know he's really worked hard on them. And yeah, we're we're so lucky to have those studies because actually a bunch of the people from the ROI studies will be guests on this podcast. So it's great. Mm -hmm. I guess speaking of examples, you know, if you want a little sneak peek of the types of people we interview, I'll just fire off some of the things that we'll go over. So some examples of episodes we have, we go over things like, you know, what it's like to buy a SaaS business, hit enormous challenges and bounce back from them. We have an interviewee who's got a large portfolio of Amazon associates and affiliate businesses. We talk to our very own Greg Alfrank, director of marketing, to talk about how to use content marketing to scale your own empire. We have a whole episode dedicated to operations and how to master operational efficiency to lead to faster ROI. And then we, we actually get into private equity, which I know has been a hot topic. So we have a whole episode dedicated to that. We talk about how PE is drastically changing the landscape of our marketplace and how you can catch the PE wave before everyone else does. So So yeah, so that's an overview of the kind of episodes we're going to have. And I think our audience, at least I'd like to think you guys are going to learn a lot from it. So I don't want to give too much away. I want to save a little bit for the episodes when they roll out. But I do want to get into who in the world Brandon and I are. So Brandon, can you tell me a little bit about where you're from and what you did previously before Empire Flippers? Yeah, so... A little bit of a long story. I'll try and start from the beginning where everything kind of kicked off. So I was in the military. I was in the Navy stationed in Japan for four years. Um, Once I got out of the military, I was working a few sales jobs and business to business jobs, things that were just kind of commission sales based. And I kind of built up my knowledge in sales and a little bit of marketing knowledge as well in that time. But right around that time, I was working in a factory and I was really started to not really like where I was going with my life. I felt like my purpose wasn't really being fulfilled, you know, working in a factory, working night shift and a couple other miscellaneous jobs I was doing on the side from there. And, you know, I decided, you know, I needed a change in life. And so ultimately what I decided to do was I would go to Starbucks almost every morning. I'd pay for the $5 coffee (laughs) so I could use their free Wi-Fi. And I would literally sit there for maybe seven, eight hours a day in Starbucks before I had to go and work my night shift job and just learn about digital marketing. So I took a few courses, a few Udemy courses, a few other things that kind of got my knowledge started in you know the online space. I did some coding camps and things of that nature. I found you know what really had stuck with me and, and what I was most passionate about was SEO. So I started learning more about SEO and learning how to build clients. And ultimately, I got a few of my own SEO clients. You know that I was basically building up their SEO and then also improving their on-page SEO within their WordPress sites. And once that kind of started to stick and I noticed, you know, this was a feasible way of making money and being able to work from my laptop and just, you know, 
kind of on my own schedule, I decided to go 100% all in. I applied for a dive resort in the Philippines that was looking for a digital marketing specialist, and I got approved for the job. Basically, I sold all of my stuff. I sold my car. I sold all of my possessions living in California at the time and basically just purchased a one-way ticket to the Philippines and took off. Great story about the dive resort I was working in the Philippines. It was through the Tropical MBA. So where Tropical MBA and where actually Empire Flippers kind of had their first mastermind to gather their ideas and their thoughts into building this empire was at this dive resort in the Philippines. And once the owner of the dive resort introduced me to some of the guys from the Tropical MBA as well as Empire Flippers, that's what kind of got the door open and got my start into working with Empire Flippers and then ultimately working with their marketing team today. It's funny that you say that. I feel like we both had kind of weird synchronicities where we met the Empire Flippers team before we actually got hired on. Like I, that's part of my story as well. I'll get to that in one minute. I actually have one question for you. Did you ever get kicked out of uh, Starbucks for being there for so long for seven or eight hours? Or did anyone question you? <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, that was kind of where I kind of felt I found like the loophole within using their Wi-Fi for, you know, almost a whole day was, you know, okay, you buy a coffee, you're a customer. And then I would just literally sit on that coffee for eight hours. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I would just, yeah, just kind of stretch it out from there. And, and, you know, of course I could have gone to like an internet cafe or things of that nature, but then they charge you per hour. So yeah. it was ultimately the way I saw an, a great investment for my time and, you know, save a little bit of money, even though I was spending $5 on a coffee. But yeah, it was kind of a great atmosphere. It kept me busy in the mentality of knowing, okay, I'm here. I can't just kind of let things go lackadaisy. I have to stay focused. And it, it did ultimately help me to stay focused and learning the knowledge that I needed to become successful with SEO. Yeah, I think Starbucks is my go-to place to, if I know I need to sit somewhere for a long time, if I need to shamelessly use Wi-Fi, Starbucks is my first place. It's yeah. super interesting how I feel like as Americans, we're used to that. Like, wait, I don't think we have like a uh, any shame about doing that at Starbucks. But then if you go to other countries where Starbucks is more of a treat, like you can't do stuff like that. Like it's like a fancy, like a day out sort of deal. So in any case, no, it's, it's super cool. I, I really love your story and how I just, I remember when I met you and kind of hearing about your journey to join Empire Flippers, like you really worked your ass off to get here and to make it happen. And it's kind of amazing how like it all came together. All of a sudden you're, you're in Starbucks eight hours a day and then you're like in the Philippines where you know, Tropical MBA guys are hanging out, the Empire Flipper team is hanging out, and then boom, and now you're here hosting a podcast for them. It's crazy mm -hmm. how life works out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. It's a, a year almost every day in Starbucks, eight hours a day, learning how to do this digital marketing and SEO and, and taking all of these courses and, and learning from other gurus and other people that have info courses online. And at the time, I felt like I was kind of just you know paddling along and not really getting to my destination. But ultimately, in the end, you know, it, it paid off for itself and which shows, you know, you know, ultimately the time old saying is, you know, hard work will always pay off. Mm. And real quick, I don't know if this was quite clear from the beginning. I know where you're from, but tell the audience where you're from. Yeah. So I'm um, born and raised in California. So kind of East Los Angeles area. Riverside is the most common city that's in that area that most people know about. And yeah, so born and raised in California. And then ultimately I did join the military. I joined the Navy when I was 19 and got shipped off to Japan after that. Not a bad place to get shipped off. Yeah, which off. did ultimately. Yeah, no, that definitely one of the first, you know, stations that, you know, a lot of people were hoping for when it comes to the military is, is getting stationed in Japan. And, and that ultimately is kind of what gave me that travel bug. You know, I was the one thing I did enjoy about the Navy was, you know, the travel, being able to travel to Australia and always in South Korea and, and Okinawa and Guam. And we were all over the place in East Asia. And I loved that part about the military and traveling in the Navy. It just the job wasn't exactly the right fit for me. So now being able to have this opportunity of, of being able to work online and pick up my laptop and travel to another country. And, and ultimately being able to work on my own schedule has just been you know, something I am so thankful and, and so grateful for having this opportunity of being able to travel and work at the same time and, and doing something that I really do love as well. Oh, that's awesome, Brendan. So without making you repeat too much, tell me about like how you first heard about Empire Flippers and what made you really want to join. Yeah. So at the time when I was learning how to do SEO and digital marketing, and I was working a night shift job, I was building pneumatic pumps for this factory, this company. And, you know, I was working, you know, real hard labor job and night shift job. And during the day when I was going to Starbucks and learning how to do digital marketing and SEO work and taking all these different courses and stuff, you know, I discovered, you know, podcasts were a great useful resource for me to learn how to get into the online space or how to work from my laptop. And then ultimately, you know, while I was working my night shift job, 
I was able to listen to music in the shop and I found the Empire Flippers Digital Journey podcast. And that's really the first podcast series and and what really opened my eyes into the possibility of working from my laptop and working online and be able to travel as the digital nomad, hearing, you know, actual business owners and digital property owners discuss, you know, where they first started or how they built their businesses and some of the software and the tools. And, you know, they bring it up in the Digital Journey podcast, what the digital toolbox is, you know, and asking these business owners, you know, what are some of the software and the tools? And as some of these business owners were coming onto the Digital Journey podcast and talking about Ahrefs and SEMrush and all of these software tools that they're using to build up these niche sites or affiliate sites, I started digging in deeper and researching what these software tools do. And ultimately taking courses and Udemy courses and all these other, you know, info product courses on this software so I can learn it more and just really dove deep into this whole world of SEO and all thanks to, you know, Empire Flippers podcast, the digital journey podcast. And that's really what I, you know, have to ultimately attest my current state in my career is to that podcast. And that's really what got my start and and the drive and the motivation I have to get into this industry. That's awesome. Well, now that you're here and you've kind of made it and you've had this just crazy journey to get into it, like a year into the job, what about this has been super meaningful to you? Well, ultimately, just having spoken to real buyers, real sellers, and hearing how these digital properties have changed their lives for the better. You know, it's we've talked to many sellers and we have countless testimonials. If you're really interested to see, you know, everyone's story, you can find it on our website. But, you know, seeing the testimonials and hearing from actual sellers how this has, you know, changed their life. And now they have, you know, the capital they needed to invest in a home. They have, you know, kids on the way or they have a family that they're trying to raise. And now they have this chunk of capital that they've been able to exit from their digital property and, and to use it to better their life. It's that's been ultimately, you know, what has been the most meaningful thing for me having working for Empire Flippers now. Seeing the impact that we have on, you know, people's lives that have been able to get out of their 9 to 5 job or maybe get away from the cubicle and ultimately travel the world and work from their laptop and and hearing their stories and, you know, they meet their, you know, significant other while they're traveling and now their life is just such on a far better trajectory than it would have been had they stayed in that cubicle and That's what's been ultimately the best benefit for me having worked at Empire Flippers now for a year or so now is just to see how this industry has changed people's lives. Yeah, I agree. I feel like that's almost verbatim what I was kind of thinking when I think about the time working here and what I've seen and why this has been meaningful to me. I don't know. It's like every day you see a lot of potential for people to change their lives. And I think that's incredibly exciting. You know, it is about like the college student that wants to do their own thing and ends up making six figure or, you know, I loved talking to a mom who said she was running her FBA business from her minivan while she was breastfeeding her second baby. And it's, it's just people really working hard and kind of going out on a limb to create a life that they want. And I think doing what we do, it's like we get to be some small part of that. Especially on the marketing team, I feel like we get to be the evangelist and we're kind of shouting from the rooftops every day, hey, you could have this. It doesn't have to be a, uh, you know, life doesn't have to be a typical salary job in your hometown for the rest of your life. It can be something different. It can be by your own design. And I think that's certainly one of the most rewarding things for me, for sure. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And and we are very, you know, fortunate as well to be able to talk to a lot of buyers and sellers that come on our marketplace and the Real Money Real Business podcast, have being able to talk to sellers and, and hear their story on how they've built up this digital property that they're selling on our marketplace and kind of hear their struggles and how they've alleviated some of those issues and to ultimately make it, you know, profitable and something that is a great opportunity for someone to come in and, and ultimately scale taking it over and you know, yeah, I think it's really great that we're fortunate to be in this position. And, you know, speaking of being in this position as well. So let's backtrack a little bit and let's hear about (laughs) where you got your start, Sarah, and you know, what you did previously to working with Empire Flippers as well. Yeah. So let's see, previously to Empire Flippers, I was working in the film world, mainly in documentary for about five years. I did most of that while living in my hometown of Richmond, Virginia. So it was really awesome. It was a really cool way to talk to people, hear stories, travel the world. We did a bunch of shoots kind of all over the U.S. and internationally. So zero complaints there. I got a bit of my travel through my job, which was awesome. 
I was doing a lot of like I was mainly a producer for that time so working on the occasional feature but lots of micro documentaries for companies there was just this really interesting overlap like I knew that I was wanted to go beyond film and I really one of the main reasons was that I wanted to be remote I wanted to be remote full time so I was looking for remote work and yeah so then I came across Empire Flippers and there was this great overlap that really worked for my experience where a lot of my past films that I worked on were for large companies going through exits so a lot of storytelling surrounding major exits a lot of that having to do with private equity and then lo and behold there's this company called Empire Flippers and really all this sort of the job was like the same thing it's like storytelling for companies going through exits and it was just like a nice sort of relationship between the two so that's what made me wanted to spring or made me want to sort of spring on this role. Not to mention I saw it and saw the job for the first time. Actually, it was posted on Dynamite Jobs. And I thought it was really amazing. Like I thought the company sounded really cool. And then I I was really fortunate. I was traveling and I had the interview scheduled, but I ran into two of the sales team like in Gran Canaria. I kind of ironically where I am near now. But yeah, I just met these two cool guys. And, you know, I find out later like, I hear him over say that he's on a call. He's like, this is so-and-so with Empire Flippers. And I was like, oh my gosh, wait, I'm, I'm about to interview with that company. You need to tell me all about it. So yeah, it was just like a nice synchronicity and it was a good sign that there was good people at this company and I was going to really like it. So obviously I spoil the story. I, I get the job and here I am today, but yeah, so kind of a wild ride between going from film to online businesses, but somehow like strangely interconnected so here i am Mm. that's really awesome that you know so right before you're supposed to have your interview with empire flippers here you are in a co-working space and you hear someone from empire flippers on the phone right in front of you so that must have been really mind-boggling for you just you know with it being a big world and empire flippers team although we might be 60 plus now you know for you to be in that one particular place at that time to meet someone already on the team, I think that's just really kind of, I don't want to say it's fate, but that is kind of cool that, that <laughs> you had that experience. I'll say it's fate. Yeah, I really yeah. <laughs> embarrassed myself, you know, as Jimmy on our sales team, Jimmy and Matt. And it's funny because I had like full-blown conversations with them about, you know, they're both from the South and stuff. So we're talking about that. Jimmy's talking about how, you know, lived in Vietnam and I'm telling him, oh, I've got this interview, you know, well, I've got an interview with a company that if I got it, I'd have to go train in Vietnam. It just did not put two and two together at all. And then I hear him get on the call and he says, you know, it's Jimmy with Empire Flippers. And when he gets off the call, of course, you know, later I, I was like, okay, I have to tell you this. And he was like, I was wondering why you were smiling so big at your computer. And that's truly what I was doing. I was just like beaming. I had the biggest smile on my face. I was like, no way. There's no way this is happening right now. So it's just kind of crazy how it all played out. It was really cool. So yeah, you and I kind of in very weird and wild instances found Empire Flippers in different spots in the world and somehow ended up on the team. So it's kind of crazy. I think that's in Empire Flippers normal, but like not in everyone else normal. Now we're in it. I think it's more and more normalized. But when you're not in it, you're just like, you can't even believe it. You just can't even believe that this lifestyle exists in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And one thing that I noticed you mentioned as well before was, you know, having gotten that kind of first initial contact with Empire Flippers through Dynamite Jobs. And that was ultimately where I found my first, you know, digital marketing job for the dive resort in the Philippines was through Dynamite Jobs as well. Mm. And I know, you know, Empire Flippers, Tropical MBA, the Dynamite Jobs crew and all of those got interconnected as well. And we're all, you know, one big happy family. So it's kind of cool. It's like once you get kind of your foot in that door, that initial kind of introduction into the space, you kind of start to build these connections and these bonds with people um, that ultimately help you along your career and, you know, and your journey as well. Yeah, definitely. It's wild. I think being in this industry now, I realize how absolutely interconnected it is, which is just been amazing to see and sort of to be a part of. I don't know. It's cool. And then it's, you know, we're part of an industry where people typically don't think what we're doing is weird. They're usually doing it too. They're calling from different countries. They're going through sandstorms and weird Mexican weather. And that's just kind of like, yeah. you know, a day at the office <laughs> in our world. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Day at the home office. Definitely. (laughs) Day at the home office. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So on the subject of, you know, working at the home office, what was it that ultimately made you decide you wanted to work remote, not 
stay in one location and then ultimately wanted to branch out and travel while working. Yeah. You know, because I had a good gig going where I was doing a lot of traveling for my job, like I was saying, but I knew I wanted to be full time. I kind of discovered digital nomadism, if you can call it that, in college. And I just, I don't know, I just got really hooked. Like I studied abroad for the first time in college and it's so stereotypical, it's embarrassing. But, you know, I was that person that was like, oh, study abroad kind of changed my life because I studied in Italy and it was the first time I was really truly out of the country on my own and that's opened up my eyes to life abroad so one of the first things I did when I graduated college was you know to I'm sure like the horror of my entire family say I'm gonna go abroad when I graduate and I didn't have much of a plan I just knew I wanted to get a visa somewhere and go and do like a a working holiday visa so I actually ended up in Ireland for a year went to the UK after And then eventually came back to Richmond, started doing more documentary work, but like kept leaving Richmond. I kept, you know, sort of going on trips to Japan and to Iceland and all these other places. So I couldn't stay in one place for long. I knew that I needed that sort of control of being remote full time. So that's kind of what made me want to ship off and decide, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this lifestyle work and see if I can do it. So now two years and some change later, here I am. So it's been good. Yeah. I mean, it's awesome that you've already kind of ultimately had that sense of travel instilled in you, having working with the video production team and, you know, Mm -hmm. traveling to all these other places. So I guess you were kind of already used to working remotely with that previous company, right? Like a little bit. Yeah. Because like a lot of our jobs, you know, we were always traveling for our jobs. There was a sense of remote there. And actually the first year that I went remote, you know, in the past two years, it was freelancing for that company. So it was like remote producing and things like that, which is great. But then I just knew that I think I was like, okay, I'm I'm looking for something where the company is also remote and the team is also remote. So I'm not so much of a weirdo, basically the person that's kind of calling in from different countries when, you know, everyone's back home, it does get a little bit odd. So yeah, I mean, ultimately, like I had a little bit of a grounds for it, super thankful that I had been doing some traveling. And so by the time I came across Empire Flippers and they're like, hey, you know, we're going to train in Vietnam. How do you feel about that? Can you handle it? Basically, it's like, no problem. Was in Vietnam last year. Like, totally fine. Let's do it. So it's one of those weird benefits I find that like if you are a person that loves traveling and you get a bit of travel under your belt, it's so beneficial when you finally do want to go work remote because you have the skills in place to have you know the lifestyle you need to work for this kind of company so basically don't let anyone tell you that travel isn't useful for your career because it is (laughs) yeah and it also opens a lot of doors for you to meet people that you otherwise would have never met right i can't tell you you know how many co-working spaces i've gone to and you know, like Changu, Bali, and, you know, Dojo, and, you know, a couple other co-working spaces in Vietnam. And, you know, there's a lot of cool places that you can go and meet other like-minded individuals that you wouldn't meet in your hometown or just kind of in your own small city, you know, because everyone is content with where they are or where they're living and working. And I feel like meeting digital nomads and meeting other online entrepreneurs while you're traveling, it really just gives you more motivation to do better and to really grow and and do great with your business. And um, that's really ultimately the mindset you want to have when it comes to working online, because there's no one standing over your shoulder telling you what needs to get done today. Um, That's really ultimately it comes down to your work ethic, right? Yeah, exactly. Although, I, you know, I'm sure if Greg could send us a cardboard cutout of Greg to stand over our shoulders, he might do it. <laughs> in jest, of course. In jest. Yeah. I wouldn't um, be surprised if he has a few cardboard cutouts of himself in his closet just on standby. <laughs> he should. I will definitely ask him about that later. He might send us some now. We have to beware. Maybe hide our address from him or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in any case, it's been awesome. You know, it's certainly been great, like, on this journey here with you, Brandon, and I think it's cool for us because this is like our next step in our journey is like getting a little bit deeper with people that we're working with and kicking off this podcast. So yeah, I kind of hope that people get a sense of us and what we're here to do and the sort of things that they can walk away with. Obviously stay tuned if you want to learn more and get really down in the nitty gritty with some of our buyers and some of our team. Yep, definitely. Well, Thanks everyone for tuning in and be sure to keep checking back for new episodes that are released. And thanks again for tuning into the Opportunity Podcast. Yeah, thanks guys. 